How's it going everybody? In this video we're going to take a look at our next IV2 DMVPN topic which is going to be a dual hub single cloud design which is actually going to be pretty easy considering what we're going to be trying to configure. It's going through and it's going to be a combination of set up, setting up a new tunnel so or I'm sorry uh, modifying the existing tunnel to point towards CSR2 as well and then we have to go in and modify the Ike v2 config. So once we do that on one spoke, it'll be pretty easy just to tweak the config on all the additional spokes as well. So it's kind of like once you get it figured out for the hub and the spoke, it's you click it right out. So that's what we're actually going to go ahead and go do. We're going to go get this set up and get it squared away. We're going to start on CSR2 and CSR3. So what I'm going to do on CSR3 th uh, is a show run section uh, crypto and Ike v2. So I know it's kind of a redundant look, but I want to make sure that I have all the config pulled out. And I'll grab the DMVPN phase 3 config and I will grab the proposal and the policy first and foremost. So that's, that's the same across the board. And then I'm going to go ahead and Let's go to the beginning of the line and then go to the end and we'll do a exclamation point there. I'll go ahead and whack all of that exclamation point there. And then we're going to grab the, uh, the key ring first and foremost. We'll grab that, drop that down. Next thing we're going to do is grab the profile. The profile is going to be pretty wide open as you can see. And then we're going to drop that down here. Then we're going to come down here to the T set or the transform set, grab it, and then last but certainly not least, the pro uh, the IPsec profile, like so. Now that we have that all in play, we can pretty much copy and paste this into CSR2 and get him up and running. So that was the first part that I wanted to get done before I go through and do any of the additional config on setting up the new tunnel or anything like that. I want to make sure I get the crypto part rolled out first. So let's do a show run section IV2 and we have a lot to get rid of. So show IP interface brief. We don't have any tunnels, but if you look at interface gate one, we still have a crypto map. So interface gate one, no crypto map, CMAP. What I'm gonna do is I'm actually going to uncheck this and I'm going to do show run section IV2 and I'm just gonna start um, systematically uh, let's do crypto actually that'll be a little more encompassing I'll systematically start whacking these crypto maps so that we can start pulling them out because we need to make sure we can get this stuff up and running we know that the additional configuration can throw off the deployment so we want to make sure we eliminate the issue before it becomes one so backing these commands out is going to save us problems in the future as we saw in previous videos. So we'll go do all that. And no key ring for the rest of this. And that will wrap up, that pretty much wraps all this up. Beautiful. So now that we have all that, I can go back to here, copy, and then paste. That'll make our lives way, way easier. So now that we have all that squared away, I can now go to interface tunnel 100 and I can go to CSR3 and show run interface tunnel 100 and I can go grab this config right here drop it onto there like so I can do copy paste and then I can just do dot two like so and then grab that like that go to CSR2 the tunnel is going to be down no big deal though we're going to do that Brings the tunnel on, Isocamp is now on. So now what I get to go do is on CSR3, I'm gonna do a show run section uh, Ike v2. And I have to go in here and add an entry underneath the, um, this, the DMVP and key ring. So, oh, I'm sorry, on CSR4, not CSR3. So show run section Ike v2, I have to go in here and add an entry in this. So I'll go ahead and add the entry in this guy real quick, which will be doing this. 
the peer will be CSR2. The address is going to be 21.0.0.2. The pre-share key local is CSR4. The pre-share key remote is going to be CSR2. And that's pretty much it. So now we get to go do show run section Ike v2. Ike v2. I get to go grab this syntax right here. And actually, let's do this. And then I get to go and add this line right there. That's pretty much it. And so as I add that in, I will just tweak it as we're going along so that when I get to CSR5 and CSR6, it's just tweaking the command a little bit and then we'll be in really good shape. Do show run interface tunnel 100. I just have to come underneath interface tunnel 100 and type in IP NHRP NHS of 10.1.1.100.2 NBMA of 21.0.0.2 multicast. Okay, so then do show history. I'll grab these two lines we can pick as well and paste them in like so. So then it'll just be a matter of adding another node to the config. And actually what I should do is on CSR2, do show run section EIGRP, router EIGRP VPN, address family IPv4 autonomous system 1, network of 10.1.100.0, 0, .0, .0, .0 and network of 172.16.1.0, 0, .0, .0 So that'll form a, a connection with 3 and 7. And then what I will do with the rest of this config here will be to set this up on 4. So I will go ahead and type that in. And now that I've done that, we should have a connection to 4 sooner than later. Do show IP interface brief. Do show run interface tunnel 100. All that looks good. So let's go back to CSR4 and see why he's not forming a pair. Do show run interface tunnel 100. Okay, he's got all of that going for him. Uh, let's see here. Do show run section EIGRP. Yep, so that should all be working. Four is there. Do show run section EIGRP. Yep, that should be working too. Let's see. Why is that not coming up? CSR2. Let me go and take a peek at this. So I'm appearing to router two that way, which is great. Um, what am I missing here? We go to CSR4, do show IP interface brief, tunnel is up, do show DMVPN. I have an adjacency, oh, it's stuck at Ike. So I might need to, to clear the adjacency. So show crypto IP2 SA. I may need to balance the tunnel. So let's clear crypto IP2 SA and see if that helps. Um, clear crypto. Uh, let's see. Clear crypto. No. Clear crypto SA. That'll actually bring down the connection. Well, it should have. Let me go just bounce the tunnel. Interface tunnel 100. Let's just shut it down. And that should trigger it to come on up. Go ahead and no shut it. Let's see. Is 2 not set up for this yet? Do show run section IV2. 
Oh, that's why. Okay, yep, so I was being an idiot. Uh, you'll notice right here that I have the local CSR3. That's not going to work. So let me go into each one of these and change the local to be CSR2. Uh, let's do the peer of this will be CSR2, and then this will be peer of CSR2. Let's try that. So we will go shut. Bring that tunnel down again, and then no shut. That should fix our problem. Two, and then three. There we go. That was El Problemo. So now we get to go uh, do show run section Ike V2. So we have our syntax set up correctly, so we're good to go there. So I'll just need to make sure to change the, the config here to be CSR5, and then the, the new config like so. So let's go over to CSR5, and we'll go in and dump this config in like so. And uh, we formed an adjacency right away. Do show IP EIGRP neighbor. We have two and three up, and then we just have to do the same thing with six. Simple as that. But like I said, once you have a working config where you know it's just a copy and paste and the adjacency comes up, then you can get it to the point where it's just that fast. And so there we go. So CSR2 is now up and everything looks good. We're going to go to CSR2. We'll go to um, router, EIGRP, VPN, address family, IPv4, autonomous system 1, AF interface is tunnel 100. And we'll type in no split horizon. And then interface tunnel 100, we'll type in IP, NHRP, redirect. So now we have both spokes, or I'm sorry, both hubs are operational. And we have it set up to where in the event that one of the hubs goes down, we'll have a, be able to fail over to the other hub and then we'll be able to still get phase three operations. So if we were to look at say CSR four, for example, and do a show IP route, we're gonna have equal cost routes to everything. So in this particular case, this goes back to what we talked about in like version one, right now. We have Ike done, we have IPsec done, we have uh, NHRP done. So we're at this point, the, our next step is to do either go in and modify the delay, or we have to do some sort of longest match routing and say, okay, from the hub down to the spoke and the spoke up to the hub, we need to propagate a really long uh, route to each other. So what I will normally do is on a CSR 7 perspective, if I look at this and do a show IP route, we should have equal cost routes to a bunch of different things, right? 10.4, 10.5, 10.6, etc. We can all reach the those next hops. What I will do, and this is the only drawback to it with a configuration like this because we have a single cloud and we have a um, Single, we have a single cloud, so each spoke has basically two uplinks, one or two peerings, one going to CSR2, one going to CSR3. It's easy to do this modification on the hub side because then all I got to do is go underneath uh, router, EIGRP, VPN, address family, IPv4, autonomous system 1, AF interface tunnel 100, and type in summary address and give some sort of long summary address. Like for example, CSR4 sees 10.1, and I can just come over here on CSR2 and type in 10.1.0.0 slash 16 and do that. That's going to cause a resynchronization. And then I go back to CSR4, I can hit the up arrow, and now we're going to go this route. So am I still gonna propagate the slash 16? Yeah, it'll be there, but it won't prefer that path. It'll prefer to go towards router three for everything. But on the flip side of that, it's going to be harder to have traffic for from the hub to the spoke. That traffic will be more difficult to control. So in this case here, I don't really have any luxury. So what could I do on the hub side? 
well, I can modify the delay. So that's what I'll do actually. Let's go to this side here and I'll type in the delay. Whoops, no, I want to, I'll type in the delay. Um, the exit out of the the interface tunnel one. No, I want to underneath the interface tunnel one hundred. Type in the delay of. We'll give it a hundred thousand. That will cause CSR seven to see traffic a little bit differently. And so now we should only choose the path through um, router three. So now by modifying the delay at the tunnel level, that makes the path towards CSR2 less preferred. But now I still have a backup path. So in the event that CSR3 goes down or whatever the case might be, maybe each one of these spokes has a secondary internet connection. And so we're binding um, that, that would normally be a different scenario with dual hubs and dual clouds. But in this case here, we have a single cloud with dual hubs. So we need to do some routing manipulation. And that's basically what we've done. We've gone in and sent a longer match routing from the hub to the spoke. But from the spoke to the hub, CSR7 was seeing both CSR2 and CSR3 as a next hop. So by modifying the delay on CSR2, we send traffic through CSR3 to the spokes. And that makes everything that makes everything work. And there's nothing wrong with doing that. It actually it's a it's a function you can figure and it works out quite well actually. So that's basically where, where we are with that. I don't really have anything anything more to really go over than that. Um, we'll take a look at dual cloud dual hub in the next video. And until next time, guys, thanks for stopping by. We'll catch you guys in the next video.